Hey everybody, it's Stiplin Vaughn, and as you can see, as always, I am at my local dive bar, hard at work, no one's here, but you can tell from the music in the background, along with the uh, occasional voice, that I am indeed at my local bar, and I'm hard at work. Uh, if you look at this piece here, uh, you can see where I didn't really get a lot done after my video yesterday. Uh, the reason why I didn't get a whole lot done by your perspective is because uh, I have another page that I'm working on. I can't show it to you because it's like a major reveal of the story that I'm doing. Uh, so I didn't want uh, you guys to uh, see that page. So I work on that one uh, when I'm not doing the videos. And this one here, uh, other than the very top panel, uh, this to you just looking at this uh, it's like okay you can tell that we've got a guy as a silhouette and he's drinking and we've got two people looking one person's applauding it one person is frowning upon it and then the next panel we see what's the result of drinking heavily he's passed out so working on that and then of course you saw the panel where she's like night night you always have fun so that's just where I stand with this video right now, or not, not this video, but this panel and page. Uh, last night on the chat, yes, there was another murder attempt on me. The chat's getting very persistent in trying to kill me. Uh, don't worry, chat. I mean, I mean, if you don't fail, try and try again. I have faith in you. I am sure you will eventually succeed in taking my life. And of course, you'll be providing all of the haters with all the material they need. Did you see that? Did, 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 did you see that? Comic Skeeter, a hate group. They, 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 they killed a man on stream. How did he die? Oh, it was horrendous. He died of laughter. He was murdered by his fans by laughter. Yeah, okay, trust me. You guys will eventually succeed if you try hard enough. Um, I'll tell you guys uh, how I know you guys are doing a damn good job at trying to kill me is uh, uh, the week before uh, when you guys got me laughing so hard, uh, I got very lightheaded and I got tingly in uh, my cheeks and my arms. So <laughs> you disrupted some blood flow, guys. You disrupted the blood flow. So, but I have faith in this in this hat group that you guys will succeed in taking my life. So. Those were it's like I died happy, and uh, as I was gasping for my last breath, laughing my ass off, I reached out and I clutched a pencil in my hand. That way, my death wish would be fulfilled, and I died with a pencil in my hand. And for an artist, that's a great achievement to be able to die holding the implement that gave them life for so long. Um, this is topic, today's topic is a topic that I've wanted to discuss for a while, uh, at least the last two weeks. Uh, Dale, uh, Dale Gunn, who's now in charge, James Gunn, I'm sorry, uh, who's now in charge of uh, DC Comics. Uh, apparently, la uh, two Thursdays ago, they had a meeting and there was an upcoming purge. Now we have not really heard anything about it, okay? Me personally, uh, they could continue to purge and purge and purge as much as they want. They're not going to solve the DC problem. For me, the DC problem starts at the top and that problem is Jimmy Lee. Everybody wants to keep kissing his ass because he did such a great job on X-Men and Wildcats and he created his own studio for Wildstorm. And you know what? Bravo. 
he did a great job. The problem is, he proved with Wildstorm that he can be a leader and have success. But he hasn't done that with DC. He couldn't give two shits about DC is what he's proven to me. The way sales of comics have gone through the floor since he took over is a dismal. Okay? This company is going to continue to fail while he's leading them. And he's not being a leader. He's not being a leader. Because if he was a leader, he'd be a spokesman. He'd be getting out front. Think about it this way. Regardless of how well or how poorly DC was doing under Dan Didio, Dan was out front in front of every single issue going on. He was doing press releases. He was going to shows. He was talking to uh, people about what was going on and, and, and putting a positive spin on it. Like, we're doing these things and these are great and just being able to properly address both sides, the existing fan base and doing what he could to keep the fan base while trying to reach out to get a new fan base. Okay? Jim Lee hasn't done jack shit. Okay? I say that Jim Lee is the Exxon Valdez. Now, we all remember what happened. Now, the younger generation, probably not. The Exxon Valdez oil spill happened in March of 1989. It was an oil tanker that spilled millions of gallons of oil in the, uh, I think it was uh, Prince William Sound in Alaska. And when it happened, okay, what did Exxon do? First of all, it took them over a week to acknowledge there was an oil spill. And we had news reports and people going, no, look, look. They're going, no, 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 there's, there, there's, there's nothing going on here. There's, there's no problem. And like, um, excuse me, here's the photographic evidence. Here's the news reports. Here's pictures of ducks and fish covered with oil. You guys are, are not acknowledging it? And when they finally did acknowledge it, they were sending in low-level executives, low-level spokesmen, and it just made the wor problem worse and worse and worse. Okay? You think about it, okay? We all know, remember the, water, the movie Water World. Where were the smokers? What was their base? Where, where was their home? It was the Exxon Valdez oil, oil tank. When we had the movie um, Lethal Weapon 3, Mel Gibson was sucking gas out of the gas tank onto the ground, and then he drove the tank through all the houses and set it all on fire, set all the houses on fire, okay? And when he was sucking the gas out, and it, he got some of it in the mouth, and he spit it out, and he goes, Ugh, Exxon. Okay, Exxon became, and, then still, and still today, is the laughing joke in pop culture, okay? The climate activists, I'm surprised they've let up Warren Exxon. They should be using that as their flagship still to show how this is so bad for the environment. Look what they did, and they're still in business. Okay, now I'm not going to fault, I'm not going to excuse Exxon at all. I, I, I blamed Exxon just as much as everybody else did. Okay, for starters, what did Exxon do? They tried to pin it on the oil tanker that he was intoxicated. He had to go to court to prove his innocence against the corporation with he, that he was not intoxicated, to vindicate his name and reputation. Okay? They used, Exxon used him as the scapegoat. Okay? Still to this day, I'm amazed how they're able to still maintain and be in business. Okay? Jim Lee is Exxon. He puts nobody out front to address these issues. In fact, who does he have addressing these issues, these naysayers, when DC's attacked? He lets two of his activist writers, Tom Taylor and T. Franklin, take to social media and brag about what they're doing. When the regular fan base is going, no, we don't want this at all. This is bullshit. This is crap. And what do they do? 
they laugh it off and they blame us that we're the problem when they're the ones creating these projects that nobody wants. Okay? They're the ones. They're like, we need a Queer Robin. Guess what? Queer Robin didn't sell, so why the hell did you even create it? And we knew it was going to be a failure before it was even launched. We knew it was going to be a failure. We told them it was going to be a failure, and they just spit in our faces. Okay? Did Jim Lee do anything? Did he ever do anything to address the public about this? Has he addressed at all how the, his disappointment in uh, the uh, cancellation of Robin or Batgirls? No, he hasn't said anything. He hasn't done jack shit. Okay? Jim Lee is Axon. Flip side of that is prior to that. You had Dan Didio. Love him or hate him, he was, in, he was out there in the forefront addressing all these issues. Okay? In 1982, Johnson & Johnson had an aspirin scandal. Okay, uh, they had aspirin capsules that were, uh, they are almost like, seven people died in the Chicago area. Turned out that the, the aspirin was, was uh, uh, the call, that the, the cause was, bad, was, was, the, was Johnson Johnson's uh, brand of aspirin. I can't remember what the name of it was. I can't remember whether it was a leave or a bear. But when that hit, what did Johnson Johnson do? The head of Johnson Johnson stepped up, took the podium, took the reins, and was the face of that company to address and to navigate the company through the crisis. Okay, that's what Dan DiDio was. And what happened to Dan DiDio? They fired him. You really think about it, okay? If Dan Didio was still there and he was the one who's, who made the call about uh, queer Robin and, uh, and bisexual Superman, and you know what? I don't care how you phrase it. Like, you're doing it wrong. He's not this, he's this. No, no, I don't care, okay? The fact that I'm getting it wrong about both these characters and that they're not this, they're this, okay, illustrates how much of a failure it was. Both books were canceled. Sales were abysmal. Okay? Dan Didio, if he had been there, A, would it have been uh, greenlit? If it had been greenlit, he would have properly navigated the, like, how about, yes, Robin is a character of uh, 30 years, and he is, and so in our minds, he's an adult, but he is still just a, a teenager, and he is at that age where they discover who they are, and that there are many instances of people who uh, had sexual relations with uh, the opposite sex until they realized who they were. He would have navigated the whole thing that the Robin still would have stayed Robin, and his sexuality would have been at the forefront. First of all, I don't see where they would have been pushing it as Dan Didio would have been pushing, like, we've got a gay Robin. He would have been like, what is the story behind Robin? He would have been pushing up the story of what Rob, of what the threats are that Robin's facing and this, that, and the other thing, and then get the readers in there to then see you slowly seeing Robin coming over that he maybe he is 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 he gay you'd question it for a num for a period of time before you'd outright have him come out and when he would come out you would wait until that re issue had been had actually released or literally just before that issue was released that is how you bring how you bring the reader base in to get the reader base to accept What's happening? That's what Dan did. He would have done. That's how Bear handled the situation. They took the situation, they addressed it, and they got the faith of their customers back. And they maintained it through that uh, incident. Okay? That is not Jim Lee at all. Jim Lee, as a leader, Again, I am not challenging Jim Lee, the artist, okay? 
um, just this last year. Actually, no, it was technically last year, but within the last 365 days, uh, I had the opportunity to get uh, the Jim Lee, uh, the X-Men Big Book. It was like, you know, it was about the size of my drawing board, and it was an oversized edition of uh, Jim Lee's X-Men work. It wasn't the artist black and white edition. It was released by Marvel. It was full color, and it is great. I love it. I mean, to be able to look at look at it really closely at all the how the pages were composed, how the brush strokes were with uh, Scott Williams' artwork over Jim Lee's pencils. Uh, it's extraordinary. I love it. Okay, but that's right. That but that's criticizing and that's applauding Jim Lee as an artist not as a leader and like I said he's proved time and time again with Wildstorm and Homage Studios that he can be a leader he's choosing not to he is at DC for a paycheck only he should be an artist he should be a freelance artist or in staff he should not have anything to do with decision making going on at DC and that's why I refer to Jim Lee as the Exxon of DC Comics and he needs to be removed. If they want to give him a nice fat settlement and like okay you're not going to work you're, here we're, we're not working for the company uh, you can announce we're going to say that you're stepping aside and we'll give you a nice nice deal but we're also going to have an NDA so you can't speak ill of us and also we're going to have an, an, in that NDA uh, you can't produce artwork for any comp competitor for at least mm, four years, five years. Okay? At his level, that's what he's going to He's going to, no matter what happens, okay, he's going to get a golden parachute. Okay? The thing is, though, I would see if you're at, if, if you're at that level in, in the company, you know, okay, he's, not, he's costing us money. But we can't let him go to the competition. We have to give him a golden parachute. We have to put the NDA so he doesn't speak ill of us. But we can also put in that golden parachute that he can't provide any work for our competitors. Which means all he can do is, is do his con, his, his con appearances. And then if on his own, if he wants to do his own book, to release the day after the, con, the, the uh, non-competitive clause completes, he can do that. But as to what he's done to DC, and the reason why I'm going so in-depth about this is because I am a DC fan. Or I should say I was a DC, a big DC fan. When I first discovered superhero comic books outside of Star Wars and G.I. Joe, I started getting DC comics. I started with the Justice League of America. Then I think one of the first books I got after that was... Uh, all-Star Squadron taking place during World War II and that was even before I was a big uh, big history buff about World War II and I would not be surprised if I look back on it I discover that the reason why I'm a big buff of uh, World War II history is because of uh, All-Star Squadron uh, I, I still to this day I can go through an all-star squadron comic book and see how they make references to actual historic events going on in the world during that period of time and I'll be like oh wow I'd forgotten about that um, my infatuation with uh, knowledge about uh, World War II even goes to I, when I was in college uh, I took a class called Hitler Nazi Germany and it talked about how why did why did uh, uh, why did World War II happen how did the people of Germany allow Hitler to take power and how did uh, how was he able to do it why did they let it happen? And it was extraordinary how you can tell that it's not being taught anymore because 
If you do not learn from your history, you're deemed to repeat your mistakes. And what we're seeing right now is we are repeating our mistakes in history because we're not learning from it. And back full swing, okay? DC's making all the wrong mistakes. They're not learning from their mistakes. They don't want to know what their mistakes are. They should know better. They should be looking and going, okay, this is what we need to do to bring the fans back. We need, this is what we need to do to maintain the fans we do have. Okay? If we are look, trying to get that market, create characters. Okay? If you want, if, I mean, you have. Like, you bought Jimmy. Hello? Jim Lee. You created the best gay couple in comic books with Apollo and the Midnighter. And you haven't done jack shit with them. Instead of, instead of making them household names. Think about it. Okay. Iron Man. He was not a household name. DC, Marvel made a movie on it and made Iron Man a house, household name. I work in a dive bar where none of them are comic book fans. But they all know who, who, who uh, Iron Man is. They all know who the Black Widow is. They all know who Hawkman is. These are not, not these were never main these were never mainstream characters like Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, the Credible Hulk. Okay? They made them. You could have made Apollo Midnight household names and people would have loved them. And it wouldn't have mattered at all to anybody that they were a gay couple. But you took the easy way out because, Jimmy, you were just there to collect a paycheck. And you're allowing everything that's going wrong in D.C. to happen under your watch. Okay? Again, you are the Exxon Valdez. And what you're doing is spilling garbage all over the garbage, all over the comic book industry. And you need to be go away. And you need to let somebody who gives a damn about comics and DC comics and understands these characters and be a leader. That is who we need at DC. But hey, thanks to uh, Jimmy Lee, uh, life is very stressful. But I'm just going to take it all one dot at a time.